up, you listen to my monkey mouth. As a companion, when you got pun on the canoe route, hopped in a portal and got in a fight. Elias knocked him out. Bow, Naruto fighting style. Bow, you will see he tapped out. Bow, we win, we get crowned. Monkey mouth, monkey mouth, monkey mouth, monkey mouth. All right, man. So, welcome to SUYL. We watched episode three. Is this the third iteration? This is the third watched? one. No. We got the bear. We've got um, prey. Yeah. And now we have uh, Stranger Things. Yeah. And so you just finished the last season. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it all. Yeah. So did you uh, did you like binge it all at once, or did you kind of like okay? So you watched from yeah, man. And so that was why I watched it so late because I knew. I like knew for a fact that I was gonna yeah go ham on it. I, I'm not good with like breaks, bro. Like I'm not, I'm not good with like wait watching an episode and waiting. Like bro, if it's there and I'm hooked, I'm gonna fucking I did de- this. I'm gonna devour it. I did the same thing with Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. Well, like I mean, I was a younger guy back then. Yeah. And I thought it was like it's like soap operas for fucking chads. Oh man, I was so different back then. I don't even know that guy anymore. Yeah. Yeah, but I did the same thing with Sons of Anarchy. I got like two episodes in and uh, had to go to sleep, and then the next day I watched like the next seven in one hey. day. Uh, on what? Uh, definitely not fucking Sons yeah, of Anarchy. Uh, yeah, I'm probably talking, talking about the thing we're talking yeah, about yeah, yeah. this episode. Yeah, yeah so I'm definitely talking about Stranger Things. Yeah, I did. I did it with that, and I also did it with uh, Vikings, which is a great TV show. You should check that one out. If I think you'd really I'm like. I'll tell it. you right now. I've seen enough Vikings from my roommates. <laughs> And it's just a soap opera, bro. I'm not into soap operas. I don't want <laughs> I like, get it. like I don't want to watch a thing about the politics between the brother and the sister of a potential group of Viking leaders. Like fuck that. That's funny. Fuck that. Is that what happened? Yeah, I mean, pretty much. Is it literally what happened? I just fucking threw a dart at a board. Yeah, bro. I mean, like, like yeah. This, it's like, well, I mean, it is. It is what it is, right? I mean, like, it, the stories have been stories have been told and retold before. I That's think. what I'm saying. Those, Sons of Anarchy but is... This is but this is why I like anime. Because yeah. Because it's just like fucking dope-ass explosions and shit. Like, it's neat and novel. A demon like, hand. Yeah, like, like, man, I don't... I don't I, I'm, not, I'm not here for the, like, the drama between people, man. Like, even in even in Stranger Things, there was, like, some weird, like, character conflict stuff that was going on. Well, they on. have it's to like, do that. I mean, the, okay, the worst... The worst ever on that... Oh, man. I would love for you to watch, like, Flash. Like, on the CW. I would love to watch the, the, the soul, like, leave your body while you were watching teen angsty soap operas of oh the flash God, or no, era bro, that sounds so oh man God awful. i would love to see like you just like face turning white melting like that like uh when he they stared into the uh into um what was it the cut co- the lost the the ark of the, the ark of the covenant or like whenever yeah. morty looks into yeah. the truth tortoise's eyes. yeah exactly like, hey, yeah. the truth tortoise is in my head <laughs> i can't get this shit out yeah bro so so man it's, I it's been so it's been a good bit since I've gone to episode one of season one, but like so the whole thing, the whole catalyst of this is that a a a, a girl, thirteen, winds up in like a diner, right? Like she just like winds up in this diner. This guy kind of like feeds her waffles, takes care of her, and he gets just gets like shot in the head and like, you know, just basically it's yeah like you said assassinated and she goes off she goes on the lamb again and she runs into what was it four three other three character three other characters you had will you had um i can't the two remember. others yeah the, the two brace other, face yeah, and yeah. black boy yeah so yeah you had yeah, so they meet up with them and she had she essentially causes 80s 80s tv havoc or 80s movie havoc right yeah. it's like young I mean, she's a little superhero bro. yeah so um yeah, and so then like, it it moves forward from there. You find out that she has psychic capabilities. Yeah, uh, like she, telekinetic capacity. Yeah, she was kind of like a part of the uh, what we MK would call Ultra. MK Ultra. Yeah, the, the men who stare at goats. <laughs> yeah, kind of yeah. So, I I I got to see that movie, The Men Who Stare at Goats. I thought I didn't it was realize we were going to talk about season. I thought we were just going to talk about the. No, no, no. I'm just kind of I'm moving moving forward okay, to the yeah, yeah. like bro, I'm yeah. having like a hard time remembering. No, no. Yeah, it's like I'm just I'm moving. It's like there yeah. was the, so season one. Yeah, I'm not. Yes, I'm, yes. We're gonna talk about the yeah, last yeah, season. So, so I'm just catching people up who pretend like they haven't seen yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So season one, eleven. Yeah. Breaks out of uh breaks out of her like con- containment con- yeah. facility underneath Hawkins. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, she managed to accidentally open up a, por a portal to the upside down, which mm -hmm. is basically like an alternate dimension that exists in the same space. Yeah. It's just orthogonal. Yeah. And through this comes like all these monsters, and the first monster they deal with in the first season is the Demogorgon. Yeah, it's a Demogorgon. And uh, I love how they have like the the compare. Like, it's like a it's like a D and D, &D, &D story. game. Yeah, everything. Yeah, the whole yeah. thing's like a big game of D and D, which is cool. Uh, um, and they wind up killing the Demogorgon, right? Uh, yeah, Eleven uh, puts her back into the, puts it back, or like kind of eviscerates it back into the upside she down. She turns it into fucking dust. Yeah. yeah. Basically. Uh, and then the next season. Uh, she's the, staying with Hopper. Yeah, the next season she's staying with Hopper. And uh, and this is the, the, the Demodog season, right? Yeah. Um, with, the, with the Mind Flayer? Or? Yeah, well, this is the Demodog season where I think we're... Oh, yeah, so, so Demodog season, and then they, like, allude to the Mind Flayer at the yeah. end of this one. So they just deal with, like, the roots, right? Like, there's, like, these... There's, like, a tunnel system that's forming underneath mm -hmm. Hawkins where this, like, malignant energy is spreading and these dogs are running around and, like, they've got, like, a Demogorgon face. And I think that throughout that, uh, Will's mother ends up falling in love with... Um, uh, I can't think of his name. I mean, he, Sam. Sam, yeah, Sam, Sam yeah, we, yeah. So falls in love with, and he gets he gets torn apart by the Demodogs. Yep, gets eaten. And uh, which is just basically like the CW version to push her and Hopper together. Yeah, yeah. Over well, time, well, and also like the whole time too. Like by the second season, the governments get more involved. Yeah, like they're having to like deal with Russian bad guys yeah. and American bad guys. Like there's these bad government people on either side of the thing, and yeah. ultimately they wind up like taking an 11 down and she like seals the hole mm -hmm. but like the mind flayer is still there and then the next season the next season it was was one of those that was like critically or like critically like season three was good yeah i liked season three a lot um the scene where uh the mind flayer takes over billy yeah and he's in the sauna and he no 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 that's the season that's the season before the one we just watched there yeah, was season three. We're on season four. Okay, so season two was the one that was critically panned, if I'm not mistaken. One of them was, was panned. well, like nobody liked it, or maybe it was that one. Well, I mean, season two was was the was like the big bad wasn't as big bad. And yeah, like alluded to some stuff, and so um, I don't know which one was the. I know I liked them all. Well, so there was a there was a, a brief period of time where thirteen kind of finds more people that are like her. And it kind of veers off of this, like, the path that it was taking. And it kind of, like, seems to... And then they kind of course correct her back into, like, coming back to Hawkins. Well, they, and, just, they just explore her exploring yeah, herself. Yeah, exactly. You and know? I think that, that people weren't weren't quite into that particular venture. And yeah, they wanted well, to know, course correct. At the end of the day, like, you know, they're, they're, they're developing character how they want to. Yeah. You know I honestly had no problem with it. I thought it was great. I think it was good for her to meet people I who mean, were... I mean, I definitely feel like season two was the worst of all the seasons. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I, it's like... It's like saying it was a smaller gold nugget than the other yeah. gold nuggets you got. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, you got a bunch of gold nuggets, and one of them has to be the and smallest, but it's yeah. still a gold nugget. Yeah, and so now we're introduced, like, we're on season three you're talking about, and we're introduced to Billy and Billy's sister, Max. Max and are fun characters. Yeah, and Billy. Max is still an OG. Yeah, and so, so Billy is, like, the new, like, he sexually awakens um, the, the stay-at-home mom who's, like, you know, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's, there's yeah, yeah. He, he, he's he's fresh young meat. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he's like sexually awakening all these old, all these older women who are just like, you know, just kind of like, just just he's sexually. A yeah, guard, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, like, it, it's definitely it's funny. Person. It's like and like he's he, they they played him off as like a, they played him off as this character who was supposed to be like racist and angry and angsty, but honestly, he was just a dick brother who was like. Like kind of being mean to Max because Max is a stepsister and he doesn't he's 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 just an asshole bad, like bad father yeah, figures no yeah, father exactly. figures yeah 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 exactly listen to, listen into metal music back yeah in the day. Like, angry kid <laughs> yeah angry just kid. and he had every right to be I mean like he you know he had every right to be angry I mean he's 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 experiencing life in a, in a strange environment with a person who he doesn't know how to feel about her because when he stares at her he sees everything that tore his family apart right yeah. so it's kind of hard it's kind of and so Billy ends up getting, Billy ends up getting taken in by the by the by the mind flare. The mind flare. And uh, there was actually kind of like an undertone of like hearing three bells ring, three and hear three and hear three hearing three chimes. And so when Will goes missing in the first season, he hears three chimes. Then something happens on the second season where three chimes happen. And then when you're introduced to Billy being sucked in by the mind flare, three chimes happen. Neat. And so that kind of ties into the fourth season. 
where they have four chimes. Where they, yeah, where they have yeah four chimes, and so it's just like you. It, it subsequently builds up to meeting um, Vecna, Vecna yeah. and, and he's behind all these critical points without the within the first second. I think and they third. described if the Demi Gorgon was a foot soldier. Yeah. Then Vecna is a five star general. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, and so. But uh, one thing I want to say about the, the third season is that the scene whenever Billy is taken over by the mind flayers mm-hmm. in the sauna. Yeah. And he breaks out and Eleven stands him up. Yeah. That's like one of the, still to this day, one of the coolest moments in cinema, ever to me. Like, yeah. bro, that, like they, the way they built that up, then like the music that they used and like the suspense that they created. Like, there's very few times, whenever I watch something and it creates like. I'm I'm good at feeling like uh, sadness and empathy. Yeah. Right. Uh, like if someone dies in the show, I'm like, oh, that's real sad. Mm-hmm. But like, very rarely am I like, oh shit. Like anxiety. Like, what the fuck is about to happen, yeah. bro? And like, whenever he was trying to break out of that fucking sauna, bro, he mm-hmm. gets me goosebumps right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, they did so good with that scene, and then the way that Eleven fucking stopped it, bro, yeah, and picked him up. Like it was just, it was a dope idea. It was dope execution on the production end. They're like they brought it to life, bro. They did really, really good with that. Like, but like whenever that happened, I actually watched that episode like three or four times. Did you um, uh, ever watch George A. Romero's Night at the Living Dead or anything like uh, that? The one where they're like old black and white, and they're like wa- zombies walking. Yeah, but there's another one that's where it's 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 basically ma- it's a uh, it's early it's mid nineties, mid nineties to eighties, kind I don't of like. Think I saw that one. I saw the black and white one back then. So the, this one, this one, kind of like. Plays in the plays with the themes of like capitalism, so it's like all done in a mall, and that's kind of what I got the feel of. Where they like they they subsequently meet where everybody is going to meet. Like it's the mall. It's it's capitalism in the nth degree. It's eighties capitalism yeah. where you had like Orange Julius, you had F Y E, you had you know all Radio Shack, all these little great stores, all living in one cohesive spot, and uh, you know. Food court, bro. One just thing, uh, definitely Reaganomics, you know. One thing that happened uh, during the uh, the uh, Mind Flayer season was a uh, something happened that was a parallel between it and an episode of, of an episode of Adventure Time. Oh yeah, that's yeah. I didn't never knew that. Yeah. That's so cool. So uh, I mean, I don't think they did it on purpose. But, oh, okay. But um, there was a scene in an episode of Adventure Time where the Lich took over Princess Bubblegum. And the oh, Lich okay. is like this ethereal bad guy. Yeah, you showed me that. That guy gives me the creeps. I, I love Ron it. Ron Perlman is the goat. For that. <laughs> yeah. Ron Perlman's depiction of the Lich is so fucking good. That, that like, concreted Ron Perlman. That concreted yeah. me as a Ron Perlman fan, the way that he depicted the Lich. But also in Sons of Anarchy. He's also in Drive. And mm-hmm. Drive is one of my favorite movies of all time. We could do an SUI. We could do a fucking thing. Is, like uh, is on Drive the, uh, the one where he's doing, he's a stuntman and he's doing hits? On the side, uh, he's not doing hits on the side. He uh, he he winds up going on a job that's like unknowingly for the mafia. And, oh, like, okay. Shit pops off and like, but the bottom line is like, I will fuck Ryan Gosling's brains out. <laughs> have you seen Have you seen the movie This Is the End? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where Danny McBride has Channing Tatum <laughs> on a leash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's me with Ryan Gosling. I'm telling you that's right so fucking funny. now, when the apocalypse hits, the first thing I'm finding <laughs> is Ryan Gosling's top little asshole. <laughs> Fucking fuck yeah! What were we talking about? Before we were I... talking about uh, basically how it, it alluded to t- Adventure Time in the oh, Lynch taking yeah, over well, so, Princess well, Bubblegum. So, the thing that, so what happens is uh, the way that the Lich, uh, like the Lich, takes her over, but the way that he um, gets more control over her is he makes her drink like petrol products and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like she literally like makes a bath of like petrol products, cleaning products, mm-hmm. and shit, like drinks it and bathes in it. Mm-hmm. And that erodes her insides and that like ultimately facilitates. allows him to yeah, like it, take it, over. Exactly, right? And like the same thing filling happened. that void. And the and the same thing happened with the mind flare, right? And mm-hmm. the mind flare had people eating fertilizer and mm-hmm. drinking Drano. Yeah. And like turning their insides into soup. And then yeah. when they when it got when they got to him, it just turned them inside out into yeah. like fucking Cronenberg puddles and then it absorbed them. Mm-hmm. And like when they were when they were drinking the Drano and like eating the fertilizer and shit, the whole time all I could think about was that scene from Adventure Time where Princess Bubblegum's like chugging fucking Drano so that she can. There, it, it takes me back to the Goosebumps episode where the dad is a plant 
and he's like eating. Bro, what the fuck? How did you just yoink that from the vault? I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. Not only did I watch that episode, but I read that book. Yeah. And like, I would have. If you hadn't just said that, bro, I might not have ever remembered that. Yeah. That's crazy. I I know exactly what you're talking about. But yeah, it is kind of same energy. Wow. Catalog of just pointless bullshit up here. Wow. I can't believe you just fucking pinged that. You just gave me like access to a whole new Mm -hmm. memory. (laughs) But at any rate, man, season three progresses. So season three was great. I absolutely loved it. They wind um, up fighting the mind player yeah, in the and, mall. And mind player kills Billy. Billy sacrifices himself. Oh, Billy! Billy manages to overcome the, yeah. the mind player through his love for Max. Yeah, and uh, sacrifices himself to save the kiddos. Yeah, and so uh, he gets like an arc, right? Like Billy gets redeemed. Yeah, Billy gets redeemed. Yeah, uh, and uh, how do they actually get rid of the mind player in that? I, I know they I, use a bunch of. I know they use a bunch of fireworks. I think that uh, is it inherently sound or something that like. Fuck, I don't know. I mean, I feel like at yeah. the end of the day, like, Eleven did it, right? Yeah, like, Eleven, I think it was a group effort with Eleven kind of being the, the lynch pin in which, lynch pin, uh, the pin in which, lynch uh, pin. yeah, the, which the catalyst happens to get rid of that, that giant entity in the mall. And everybody thinks all is good. Yeah. Uh, Eleven, uh, so, uh, Hopper winds up getting turned to vapor, or so everybody thought. Yeah, so this is also coinciding with them finding like kind of Russians on American soil trying to open yeah, up under a, the mall yeah under, under the, mall. the mall yeah trying to open up a portal they got to, like a big fucking ray gun yeah. thing that's shooting a hole oh and this is this is when we actually get to meet like Uma Thurman's daughter and uh, um, she's the one who works at the Ahoy or whatever that's the ice cream Uma, place Uma Thurman's daughter yeah if you look at her she looks exactly like her no like it's so crazy as yeah. you say that it's like wow that's absolutely a relative of Uma Thurman yeah how uh, do I know what Uma Thurman looks like? Why Kill Bill. I, why do I know this? Kill Bill. Well, like, why would I ever give? Why would this ever make it into my brain as like a file that I would save? Either way. So yeah, and you get to meet, and and this is a big like punch up for, kind of changing the arc of uh, of oh, I can't think of his name. Uh, the the, the basically the uh, one of the guys who essentially takes care of the kids. The one who adopts everybody. Yeah. Yeah. He gets his arc. He gets his arc and kind of becomes the 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 the, the, the person who's who's there for the for for the kids and overall becomes a, a better person because um, he's uh, he's in it to for strictly because like. They, he 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 always seems to draw the short end of the stick, but it, there's a small part of him who, who, who relishes it. Harrington. 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 Thank you. Harrington. Steve. Steve. Steve was kind of a prick, like starting off. He was a rich guy who kind of gets everything, and then there's this real awkward moment with like KFC. I can't quite remember. Of like, I think they're at the house of uh, Beth, right, or Deb, or whoever died in the pool. The girl who died in the pool. Uh. Um, I can't remember her name. Yeah, but but yeah, yeah. She and there's like this like real awkward, like interaction with like KFC and then Barbara. Kind of, Barb, yeah, and Bar and like them kind of like trying to be better people, like because Barb is not around and they're just that's this real awkward moment. Well, I know that uh, at the end of the day, Nancy feels like Barb got got because she wasn't good to Barb, yeah. so she doesn't want that to ever happen again. You know what I'm saying? And so, man, so now we're let's let's just jump right into it with both feet. Uh, season four was season. Dope. It was so good. You get we get to meet uh, Eddie, Munson. Eddie Munson, who j- everyone fell in love with Eddie for Listen, rightfully so. I really, I gotta say my piece on this. Yeah, there are pictures of me wearing Danzig shirts at <laughs> yeah, fifteen and yeah. sixteen. Like, I hate that. Like, I was born too late to catch the to catch it when it was cool, yeah. and uh, too early before to catch it was cool. Like, I was born. In the time whenever, like, it was cool to be, like, listening to Slim Thug and Paul Wall and, like, <laughs> Texas rap wearing big baggy shit. Like, like I was rocking you, I, I was rocking the Eddie Munson vibe back in the day, and no one thought it was cool. So, like, no you, one thought that shit was cool. you had people wearing Jankos listening to yeah. Limp Bizkit being like, who's Danzig, and why are you wearing that shirt? Oh, bro, so, you know, people who don't know. I went to a 1A school <laughs> in fucking Texas called Granger, and there's a total of 1,200 people in the We graduated state. 55 students. That man. was the big class. Yeah. My, my class had like 42. We had two black people in our school, in our class. Man. Yeah. It was it was not very diverse. Um, but <laughs> so the bottom line is, is they literally accused... It's so funny, bro. 
they literally called me into the office and got on. Oh, like satanic panic kind of bullshit? Yes. They said that my Danzig shirt was representative of, a, of Satan worship because it had a demon on it. It had a, it had a, it had a skull. Of How dirt. strange. Because even Danzig kind of like takes the piss out of like, like they're like, I almost think of it as like ghost. It's like satanic light. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, it's satanic like, for the know, masses. I mean, guys, I want you to understand this. We are cool with experiencing violence as a form of entertainment in martial arts, mm-hmm. in sports, in movies. Yeah. But the moment that we start trying to depict violence as a form of entertainment in music, yeah, all of a sudden it's like that's a literal thing. Like that music is like literally like they really feel that way, and it's like, bro. Well, like we can fucking like if we can make a movie about blowing up buildings, like fucking Fight Club. Literally, the fucking movie ends with them blowing up buildings in South Dakota with all the fu- where all the fucking credit card companies are headquartered. Yeah, which and we need like, to do. We need to do that movie because I go back to that movie in different critical times in my life to see how much bullshit, how bullshitty it is. Only because I want to know. Like when you're 19. It's like profound. It's like your nips get hard. Woo! Woo! You know, your nips get hard. And then you're like 25 and you're like... And then you're 35 and your nips kind of get hard again. And then you're like... Or you're like 30 and you're... I've enjoyed it the whole time. Yeah. But it's just like... It's just kind of funny. Like, I go back to... Like, I go back to those movies. Like, Into the Wild. I loved Into the Wild. as like a young, angsty boy. Like, being able to, like, burn your social security number... And go out and just live in the magic bus in in Alaska and fend for yourself. And you die by the by the li- you die you live by the land you die by the land kind of behavior. And then there's like twenty nine year old me who goes back and watches it and it's like just call your sister, bro. Just like call your sister. Like you don't even have to, like just call her so she can hear you breathing. Yeah. Like just call your sister, man. How's he gonna call his sister and get no electricity, fam? Well, no, like, he was, like, there's certain points where he's, like, getting letters and having the ability to contact her, but he just, he just, like, that, that is a barrier which is gonna stop him to getting to Alaska. Because you, you, it's true. He loved his sister. That was the only thing tying him to, to being back in, back in the Matrix, was his sister. Yeah. At, at any other point, he's going to Alaska. Yeah. But he hears her voice and he's like, I gotta go back and check on her. So yeah. he couldn't allow that to to come into his his chance of missing out on Alaska. So it's just like as in, as different critical points in your life, it's good to go back and watch movies like that. Bro, on the subject of Stranger Things, I think that my favorite character this whole season was Murray. Oh, Murray's the best. Murray's like I'm a black belt in karate. <laughs> There's no way I can take him. And then, like they're on the airplane, like when they're like well, when they're about to get turned mm, over to the KGB yeah. by Yuri, and he's like. I did beat up Kevin or yeah. whatever is like generic. He's person. like he's, 13 he's, years he's old. Like a, he's like a 16 year old. Dude. <laughs> super well trained and super fast. And there's no way he's like that. And like, you <laughs> see like, click yeah. him and like, bro, the whole rest of the season, he's whooping ass. Well, the funny thing is, like, is like black mountain karate whooping ass, bro. The, the funny thing is, is like Murray comes to, he's there in like Arizona, right? Like in the middle of the desert. New Mexico, Arizona, in the middle of the desert, and he comes with this like IBM suitcase, putting the phone on there, the the like top of the line VPN at the time, <laughs> you know, to like circumvent um, the getting heard by any kind of government agency for like thirty seconds. It's really, it's really funny. It's awesome. It's yeah. definitely like. Um, and so I, just to kind of like go over like what happened, right? So the, basically, eleven of them are living in California, mm-hmm. right? Um, and Nancy and, uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Not Will. Mike are still living back in, in Hawkins. Yeah. And, uh, Will, Will is with, uh, Will is with, uh, is with and Eleven them. and them. And they're, like you said, they're in California. They're living off the grid. Well, semi off the grid. It's like a real small town, deserty. They're, they're you know. keeping it low key. Yeah, they're keeping it super low key. And then, um, uh, the basically, one that, basically the government decides yeah. that, that there's two factions in the government. Yeah, there's a, well, there's right? a, there's the, essentially the there's almost three kind of right because you have someone who wants thirteen to be free, you want one who's wants thirteen yeah, well, who, so, who sees thirteen well, as a so weapon. At, at the end of the day, the, the, the factions that they defined were the faction of people who felt like eleven could be effectively wielded yeah. to, to stop these remote assassinations, mm. 
Then there's a group of people who thought that Eleven was being used to commit the, the remote yeah. assassinations. They wanted to kill her. Yeah. Right. And within the camp of the people who thought that Eleven could be wielded as a tool to, yeah. to stop the remote assassinations are the two doctors from the Hawkins lab. Yeah. There's Papa and there's the, the sweeter guy. Yeah. And, and he's definitely... The sweeter st- guy gets double-crossed by Papa. By Papa, yeah. Like, because it's not supposed to be a prison, right? Like, the whole time he had it agreed, like, bro, he's, she's here by and her own evolution. Yeah. She can leave when she wants. This place isn't a prison. And, like, the moment that Eleven decides and uh, the sweet guy gives her the backup... Uh, they turn on him. Yeah, and she's she essentially created Vecna because Vecna was uh, number one. Was number one. Yeah. Yeah. So Vecna. So Vecna was actually number one, and number one was like the assistant. Yeah. In in the in the underground Hawkins lab, and uh, he had actually been metered by some device they put in yeah, his like neck. an underskin kind of like yeah, yeah. And so in the whole season, they're kind of alluding to Eleven having these repressed memories, and they really make it seem as though she's the one who like killed everybody. Yeah, right. And as it turns out, she didn't kill everybody. She let Number One loose because he had shown her the way out. She was trying to do a solid for him, and he went back and murdered everybody. And so she came back. And turn him into yeah, and this like dust. yeah, and this kind of strange thing where like oh, it's okay because I absorb them and like they're they're gonna live forget forever oh, within me. The, yeah, the, yeah. Number one was a fucking maniac. Yeah, like flat ass out maniac the whole time. Yeah, like, oh, like no redeeming. Quality. Which we, so there and so she gets double crossed and man that, well, that so when or she, he gets double crossed. Well, when I'm sorry. she takes him out, yeah, she pushes him against the wall and turns him to dust, yeah. just like she did with the demigorgon. With the demigorgon, yeah. And this time is when like. That moment when she do, when she sends him whenever she turns yeah, him to, to the dust, upside down. That's order. what actually opens up the rift between the two dimensions. Yeah. And, and he's able to utilize like this like vast empty canvas into Sadie. Well, what happens is whenever or Hawkins, I mean, what happens is whenever he gets cast into the upside down, he winds up. Um, I guess because he was so burned and yeah. like deformed that like the creatures of the land, like the demigorgons and shit, never really attacked him, and so yeah. he just wandered this fucking upside down world until he f- happened to cross the mind flayer and you know fucking number one's obviously like above and beyond you know mm. in terms of his capacities than most and so he was able to connect with the mind flayer and ultimately and turn it into a spider and kind of like control it well so the spiders were a thing where he was just into spiders right well i mean he essentially like molded it into something he could recognize well, did he? I mean, whenever whenever he got there, whenever they showed him walking up on it, it was a big eight-legged thing, and it just, like, saw him. And was I thought like, it was kind of like a disconjointed, uh, kind no, of like no, a the, disconjointed... Uh, no, that mist, uh, the, what the things the Russians called the shadow, was not the mind flare. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, the that's shadow just a, is just, a, is just a, a thing that the whatever primordial force of the Upside Down is can animate it's it's like it whenever that Mm -hmm. whenever that fucking shadow got out it Mm -hmm. like brought to life all those uh dogs and stuff yeah the demo dogs like in the vats and stuff and so um it's a slightly different character and the mind flare is actually like this whirling fucking vortex that has like a, a shape to it yeah and uh and that's essentially what will what will they like make eye contact yeah what will drew over 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 the entire town of Hawkins. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, like the the mind flayer, like creeped its way. Yeah. Like like that thing made its way in. So, like, what do you think of the Chrissy scene? Like both Chrissy scenes, meeting Chrissy and then Chrissy getting like crunched. Like which one's Chrissy? Chrissy was the uh, cheerleader. Chrissy was kind of the the oh, like bro, the, uh, the, the So I mean, they did good. They did good with that man. Yeah. Like they they uh they I mean, this the the animation was a little cheesy. Like, it, it was almost a little immersion-breaking yeah. at times, but um, the way that they, like, built it up with the clock and with the, like, weird stuff that was happening to mm-hmm. her, like, they did a good job creating suspense. What would you think of the, the deck, the, like, kind of, like, uh, maybe I'm using dichotomy incorrectly, but, like, you had two villains, essentially three villains, but we'll cut it down to two villains. You had Vecna, and then you had this real, this other underlined villain, which was basically... Um, a jockey racist prick who who was uh, or this like jockey kind of prick who was who was kind of stirring up otherism through satanic panic right yeah well, and so he I mean, becomes more of a threat than even Vecna is because he's able to rally and like stir up the troops yeah yeah absolutely yeah and uh, and 
you know, I get how that happened. You know, like he was upset. His yeah. old girl got killed like violently, and like mm-hmm. he was out for revenge. And so I think that anybody who like possesses that Avenger energy would understand how it comes oh, from. Yeah. And I think that the real enemy is like the media, right? How like the media was just like satanic panic. Yeah, creating satanic panic for the sake of salacious headlines. There's this uh, people to view, and that's what brainwashed the kid. You 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 always kind of like uh, talk about capitalism, right? And uh, that when I was, I'd always I'd talk. I'd rather not. I'd rather not talk about capitalism. Well, I'm not. I'm not an economist. Well, no, no, no. But it's, but it's, what's funny is, is like taking th- taking the cool out of things. Do you get what I'm saying? So there was this guy who had this theory of like pot was cooler whenever it wasn't in the economic sphere when there was when you weren't able to purchase it. At like the Walgreens or H E B. I mean, I think that anybody who's really with it understands that the secret ingredient is crime. Yeah, exactly. And so that's what this guy was trying to say is just like say like like when Walmart co ops a pentagram, it's no longer scary anymore. There's no there's no mystery to it. When Kmart and Walmart are selling um well Danzig T shirts, like get over it. Like yeah, just when, at this when point, when Kmart selling joints. Yeah, get the fuck over. Get the fuck over. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's no there's no mystery to it anymore. The mystery now is is full circle, and you hear, I, I, uh, we you 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 like Joe Rogan, so you know, uh, I can't think of his name, heavier set white guy who's uh who's a homosexual, uh, always like uh, oh Tim Dillon. Tim Dillon. That motherfucker is hysterical. So Tim Dillon was like God. say. Damn it, that guy. Yeah, Tim funny. Tim Dillon was saying that like now the uh, the new like kind of rebellion is uh, is is Catholicism or like religiosity, like like straight edge is now going to be the apparent rebellion beha- rebellious behavior. I mean, I'm gonna tell you right now. I've ran into people and I'm like, what type of drugs you do? And they like kind of like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't do any. And yeah. It's like, bro, if you're cool, cool. Like, you have to yeah. understand that, like, people are doing drugs so they can feel good. So if yeah. you feel good on your own, then, like, more power to you, man. Exactly. I mean, so so the, so we're at this critical point where there that each individual person is a door letting Vecna into Hawkins, yeah, right? Yeah, and, and, he's, and he's creeping his way in through their trauma, yeah. right? Like, he's, he's making them revisit their trauma. Yeah. And, like, the more times that he does that, the stronger his grip gets on them to mm. the point that he can actually kill them in, in the real world. Yeah, and so one of them is a younger guy who essentially, like, gets... gets he rightfully gets scared. I mean, a guy's in a burning car accident. He doesn't know how... He, there's no way for him to save him, you know? But he, he, in turn, uses it to kind of, like, build this hierarchy within well, I mean, the paper anybody who is in a car wreck that involves a death you're going to experience some degree yeah. of guilt and grief right yeah and like it, it he absolutely was a predator yeah and took advantage of that yeah and so they killed chrissy the cheerleader yeah they killed the uh, the newspaper kid they killed the newspaper kid and this whole time they're like hunting for munson yeah and munson's like fucking camped out at reefer rick's house and reefer yeah. rick has like been busted for weed and is like in jail reefer rick Wait, well, there was a funny thing where they they tracked him down through to his to his movies, and I think it was like Cheech and Chong. Yeah, he, yeah, they, uh, they looked up every Rick. Yeah. who had ever rented movies from the video station, uh, and like there were a bunch of people in town who yeah. were like renting vanilla shit. And then there was this one dude out in the country who was consistently like renting weed movies. Yeah, so like, I think it was like Cheech and Chong, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, all that, type all of the shit. all the like funny weed movies from yeah. back in the day, which like. Cheech and Chong is so awful. It's so it's the best thing ever. It's so terrible. It's just like oh, this is trash. I love every minute of it. Yeah, it's a uh, it's endearing. Yeah, to say the least. yeah. So uh, um, and then we find that Eddie has turned himself into what is it? Eddie the he basically runs right. He he hates himself because he runs. Yeah. But essentially, he has every right to run. He literally saw a woman get crushed into a tin can. Like who wouldn't run? Yeah. Like in your in your trailer while you're selling her illicit drugs. Like who wouldn't run? I'm gonna tell you right now, bro. If you get hoisted up in the air and get folded into a pretzel, <laughs> I'm running through the wall. Like I'm taking Looney Tunes that bitch. Bro, like, I'm taking a straight line to my truck. <laughs> like fuck the hallway, fuck the door. I'm going right through that couch, right through that wall, right to my fucking truck, bro. Like 
unstoppable force <laughs> at that point, bro. So like, I ain't mad at Eddie, but uh, they wind up uh, the the jocks wind up hunting Eddie down. Yeah. And Eddie tries to like hop on a boat and like go out across the water to get away from them, and. Uh, you know, one of the basketball players and the lead basketball player, like, hop in the water and try and chase him. Yeah. And... One of the basketball players had trauma, clear trauma yeah, in yeah, his life. Yeah, he'd been having the Vecna yeah. treatment, and he gets hoisted up in the air and folded up like a pretzel in front of uh, both Eddie and his pursuer. Yeah. And, like, I think... I know whenever I saw this, there was, like, oh, wow. Like... The Vindication. Guy, the guy who saw this happen is going to, like, be on Eddie's side now. Like, clearly yeah. Eddie didn't do that. Like, we're going to be able to, like, unify everybody. And he was like, nah, bro. What are you he doing? struck a deal with the devil. Yeah. That's how that happened. Like, it was the devil who did it. And Eddie summoned the devil. This is, like, all validation. Like, like he was like, I thought Eddie was struck a deal with the devil. And I saw the devil act today. And that means that Eddie struck a deal with the devil. Like, yeah. he, it, it validated everything that he had going. And he really doubled down. And uh, this whole time... Lucas, the mm-hmm. black boy, yeah. is playing basketball, and he's like got this conflict where he's being. Well, exp- he's, he's 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 essentially for the first time experienced popularity. Yeah, well, and the big thing at this point is that like he's either being expected to go and hunt Eddie down, yeah, with the jocks, or go and protect Eddie with the weebs, yeah, right. Like, what do you do here? I'm on the weeb side because I kind of have to be like that's just my monier. That's where I feel most comfortable. I mean, it would have just depended on where you were at at the time, really. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, but the point is that um, once once they really, really start to get close, yeah, and hunting this full down, uh, Sinclair actually pulls a misdirection move and like sends them out to so, like Hopper's old cabin, mm-hmm. and. Uh, he uh, he goes back and meets up at the high school with this, with the OG squad, and uh, and they're able to link up and, and do their thing from there. And like while this is happening, the double cross happens between Papa and the and the sweetheart um, scientist. Yeah. And then the fucking government descends on it and has a humongous fight, and like. Which oh man how like I don't know anything about military behavior. I'm not a I'm not a military expert. But that whole scene where they're where they're like throwing flashbangs and like working in unison was beautiful. It was it was it was really yeah, great like, work. Like, like the guys walking in with the shield. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So as someone who's had the SWAT team called on them, <laughs> I can tell you it's pretty goddamn authentic. At least how the SWAT team operates, man. Yeah, it's uh, and the SWAT team is like the militarized local yeah, police force. So I, psh, man, I'll tell you what, pretty fucking on point, bro. Pretty fucking on point. It, it 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 stayed with me because it was like now that is t- that that is and again for me bro it's the music yeah oh like, definitely bro, they like Stranger Things does a really really good job at creating like tension through emotional music. environments with the noises yeah. that you're hearing oh one of the cool things that that like kind of flew under the radar with some people Freddy Krueger's in it and he's uh he's um Beckna's father the one that's missing the other the eyes oh, are gouged out. Yeah, that's Freddy Krueger. Wow. Yeah. Neato. Yeah, Neat yeah, fact. yeah. That's pretty. Yeah, so fact. like, and it's it also deals with with kind of a dreamscape and cool Bro, things how like that. How crazy was it that it turned out that the demon in that dude's house was his boy? Yeah, and he lifts up his own mother and crushes her because she knows that he's dark. Like she knows that there's a yeah, force. He knows that she knows. Yeah. that She can't get in the way of that. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. he used so much power, so much, so much force within the within inside himself he slipped himself into a coma and so this is how they kind of piece together that music is Mm. the way to get people back right because the story that kruger yeah told wheeler and uh uma thurman's daughter is that he heard the voice of an angel yeah that music and he followed the music back and that's whenever uh vecna's trying to get max Mm -hmm. and they they put the headphones on max and save her um, and then the, that, more power to this woman who literally made the banger of the summer in her parents' basement and decided, fuck snares. She decided that. She was like, every 80s song has a snare in it. Not mine. What are you talking about? The Running Up the Hill. Oh, yeah. She owns that song outright. She made that song in her parents' basement. Sony doesn't own it. Nobody owns it. She owns from... Stem to stern, every bit of that song. Every time oh, so it was she, played, so she right made now. bank. Oh, good for her. I'm so proud of her. Good and she was her. like, she was like, oh, every 80s song has that like 
you know, da dun da dun da dun da dun You hear that, like, that same, like, snare, snare, snare. So she's like, I'm going to get one of these, like, the big barrel drums and just boom, 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 boom. Like, have this, like, deeper kind of, like, yeah. like kind of darker tone to the song. Yeah, that's dope. And so she's like, I'm tired of, I, I, I'm changing that's, X. That's so cool for her, dude. Yeah. That's really, really it's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing ability for her to kind of, like, there, there's this there's this really funny thing of like Mike um uh, the, the what's his name from uh, from Back to the Future can't they Marty McFly like playing running up the hill and it was like everybody's looking at each other like your kid's gonna love it <laughs> just kind of like it's so yeah. funny because like nobody really listened to running up the hill in the eighties yeah. and here you go it becomes the banger of the summer because of Stranger Things yeah dude it's great and so at this point we've covered. Uh, what's happening with Elle. Yeah, she, she pulls went. down that plane, yeah, which she, is beautiful. Yeah, she, 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 she basically uh, gets sequestered by the faction of the government mm. that believes that she's good, gets taken to a facility. They all get ambushed mm. by a bad faction of the government. L fucking smashes jets and shit and fucking gets out of there with uh, her friends who yeah. showed up with shout out the stoner boy stoner boy stoner, right the yeah. surfer boy pizza he's a fun character he's a great character they show up get her out of there right so that's where they're at there yeah um, and then uh, the one thing that we haven't really gone over is uh, what's going on with hopping them and so oh that was such a great like so so like I said he comes in with this like ridiculous 1980s VPN ends up finding out that there's there's kind of this there's two there's two essential moles. I mean, someone, someone's holding him for a ransom. Yeah, there's right? two essential moles within the within the the KGB, right? That are helping well, not them out. Well, the KGB, so there's a smuggler, named yeah, Yuri, Yuri, and there's a uh, an enterprising yeah uh, security guard yeah at this prison, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's all it is is like this the this English speaking guard has talked with Hopper, and Hopper's managed to convince him that he can get him cashed out. Yeah. And so he has then gone to the smuggler and is trying to basically get it arranged so that they can get him and he can get his cash, right? But yeah, and so, like, Yuri's favorite thing is peanut butter and guns. Yeah, um, which makes sense. Which is just, it's like, it's like, that's so Americana. Yeah. Like, like, what goes better together than, I guess, a spoonful of peanut butter and, like, shooting AR-14s or AR-15s, right? I mean, in the 80s, probably nothing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, so... Uh, Yuri winds up double crossing him. He, yeah. he, he drugs well, Yuri, yeah, Yuri drugs him in the coffee, mm-hmm. and he's uh, he. You find that he's not the Yuri of the of old. Like no, they, he, they, there's something broken within him. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, and and he snitches on the uh, on the security guard. Mm-hmm. The security guard gets thrown into like the hyper gulag where mm-hmm. they're gonna get fed to the demigorgon with. And you um, said something a while back. Whenever they're all eating the food, and we were kind of talking about fattening pigs. And like, like we were talking about that scene being so crucial to like how, how like how realistic that scene was. Yeah, like, it was just such a beautiful scene. Like, like, like the only one who's smart enough not to eat is Hopper, because Hopper's like, no, like you don't understand. This food isn't for consumption to make us. Like this isn't good for yeah, us. This this isn't, good yeah, this isn't yeah, yeah, exactly. Like that demigorgon's gonna eat us. Yeah, and thereby everything in us. Yeah, like, all this food that we're taking in—that's nutrition for the demigorgon, yeah, bro. Exactly. Like, so, like, and like yeah. it, they want us strong so that we can give it a run. A for its good money. fight, yeah. Like because it's it's not just gonna eat if we just throw dead bodies at it. Mm. It's gonna fucking eat if it, it gets to hunt. It wants to hunt, yeah. And uh, so the prey. We were talking about it on prey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so <laughs> we watched. Um, and uh, so Hopper winds up keeping some uh, alcohol and soaking a rag with alcohol mm-hmm. and lighting it on fire because he knows through previous experience that the Demogorgon doesn't fire. like fire. Yeah. And while this is happening, um, the airplane that Yuri is trying to smuggle them mm-hmm. to the KGB in, uh, Maury and uh, Old Girl, what's her name? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I can't think Let's of see. it. Yeah. Let's see if I can find her real quick. Will's mom. <laughs> yeah, Will's mom. Joyce. Joyce. Yeah, Joyce. Yeah. So they're taking they're taking Mari and Joyce, and uh, Mari realizes that he can fucking like they they, <laughs> they 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 drop a jar of peanut butter and get a piece of glass and yeah, cut each other cut out. It. And Mari whoops Yuri's ass. They crash the airplane, 
and then they wind up because they don't know what Yuri looks like, so yeah. they wind up switching roles. And Mari yeah. pretends to be Yuri. He's a, he has like a rudimentary skill like, of like, like Russian. Well, yeah, he's got pretty good Russian. Yeah. And well, uh, he doesn't think it's good, but I, I mean, I mean that he, was great. he passes. Yeah, he passed um, the he passed the sniff but test. They wind up gagging Yuri so that Yuri can't like plead his case, mm-hmm. and they wind up like as hoppers being fed to the Demogorgon like putting a gun to like the spine of the guy who's mm. running the whole facility. And so like there's like <laughs> hoppers about to fight the Demogorgon. They're ambushing the the, the like brass of mm-hmm. the of the whole jail. And uh and ultimately one uh, of like one of the guards like literally sacrifices itself solely for the fact that it knows that the that like they like we're we're in it to feed this thing. Like so uh, like essentially, it doesn't matter what I particularly do. Like, because they're trying to shoot well, it. Well, so what happens is, uh, whenever they bring the head guard back to yeah. like, the security room, they're like, "Hey, you need to do X, Y, and Z." Hey, you need to open up the gate and so that we like, can get out. He's like, "Bro, if I do that, that thing's gonna eat everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, it's gonna eat all of us. Yeah, me, you, mm-hmm. my comrades, all gonna die. Yeah. And so I can't in good faith open. I can't. I can't in good faith do that. Yeah." And so uh, Mario's like, "You commies are committed to the fucking role, man." <laughs> and uh, and so what happens is the they're having the fight, and um, Hopper winds up, Hopper and uh, and the and the security and the the crooked security that's yeah. in with him wind up getting locked into the cage that the Demogorgon was in. That the yeah. Demogorgon couldn't get out of, and thereby can't get into now. And so they're safe. And so she's just like clicking buttons, Russian Russian labeled buttons, and Yuri's like. Uh, I mean, uh, Murray. Murray's like, you can't just click buttons, and she's like, watch me. And she's like, yeah, and then just like hits the right sequence of buttons for it to crack open just enough for them to let them kind of slip in and be hoisted through the through the sewer system that is that jail out to safety, only to wind up back in, having to go back over because they know that within within the confines of the upside down, there's ways to communicate to to communicate with with i guess like there's ways to communicate back with with the hawkins crew yeah. right so they have to go back and of course murray's like like we're like crazy. crazy like what the hell are we doing and they end up making themselves back and making their way back into the into and that's the, when we yeah. see that the shadows possessed all the dogs exactly and uh they wind up you know through some miraculous means or another getting out of there right? yeah. and like once they get out that's kind of where it left off with him. And like, and really I think what is it? it Yuri from. kind of has like a like a like I think they talk about he's just had a, he, he's a, he's a broken man, and so the security guard kind of awakens the spirit of like. Oh of yeah, like, so Yuri had been sabotaging the helicopter yeah, the whole yeah. time, and so uh, the security guard convinces Yuri to actually get the helicopter working. Yeah. And they fly, and they pick up Joyce and Hopper, mm-hmm. and they get the fuck out of there in the helicopter. Yeah. And like that's effectively where the story ends for them this season. Yeah. And so back with uh, you know the scene that's unfolding with Eleven and all of them, they wind up taking Eleven to a nearby um, Surfer Boys Pizza <laughs> and, and like Purple Passion or something yeah, like yeah. that. <laughs> Uh, pur- purple Passion Punch or some Yeah, shit. Purple Passion Punch. It's three P's. But, uh, yeah. And so they wind up like buying off the local pizza joint guy with a joint. <laughs> they do the salt it's, water and make like a rudimentary deprivation yeah. tank. And they determine that the same way that Vecna is uh, encroaching on people's mind, so too can Eleven. And yeah, so, and it was kind of cool because you find out that Papa was only sending Eleven into the void to find... To find one. Ve- to find one, yeah. yeah that was and he idea. was essentially like not... Not working in the same, same kind of darkness that Eleven was able to encroach on. It always seemed like he was he was, it was something that was like, maybe, an uh, well, to so the she side was, she of was it. Going to the void, yeah. and he was in the actual. Upside yeah, exactly. Down. Right. Right. The the void is like the bridge space between the two, mm-hmm. and uh, but so ultimately. They're able to meet up with Max well, so, and yeah, and they wind up, Eleven and Vecna wind up having like this fight in Max's mind, yeah. and they are able to have that because Max knowingly, willingly turns off the music and allows herself to be used as a lure, mm-hmm. and so Vecna encroaches on her mind, and Eleven encroaches on her mind. And they have the big fight, and um, basi- so basically, they're, Eleven, they're, Eleven basically uh, loses. Man. Yeah, and there's this like I don't know if you ever watched the South Park episode whenever Cartman pretends that he has psychic abilities. <laughs> Yeah. So I basically shared that as a meme, and I said, I said, uh, season four of uh, 
of Stranger, Stranger Things, Things wrapped up in one picture. <laughs> it's literally like them fighting with each other's minds on South Park. That's great. I'm an asshole. Like, it's just, oh, like, it's it's, just, that's fucking funny. Yeah. But so uh, Vecna winds up killing Max. For right. 30 seconds, right? Yeah, well, and so, uh, I think at, I, at the end of the day, yeah. he, he killed her effectively enough for her heart to stop and for it to open the fourth tear. Yeah. Right? And when the fourth tear opens, all hell breaks loose, yeah. right? Like, it literally... Literally, like, the like, smog comes out. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, I mean it's it literally... killing flowers. It literally rips open this huge, like, T. Yeah. Like, from one point to the other. Like, imagine a compass. Yeah. And it's just got a big cross, and it's like a big tear into the upside down. Yeah. Um, but Eleven winds up... Uh, being able to somehow revive Max, so mm. Max winds up staying alive. Um, but she's I, lost in the void, is what people are saying. Like that's the kind of like thing. Is she it, when they go into Max's mind, it's it's an empty scape. She goes into Max's mind. And I think when she's back at Hopper's, when she's back at Hopper's cabin, she goes into Max's mind through meditation, and she finds out that Max's mind is wiped clean. There's no memories in there. Oh, fuck, I didn't even catch that. Yeah, and so when she does that, there's this thing of, like, well, where is Max? And is Max's memories... Did did Vecna take Max's, Max and her memories, and now it's going to be, like, a thing of, like, getting her back? Bro, how have we not talked about the fucking Metallica concert in the Upside Down? Oh, my God. Eddie the... Eddie the... Uh, what did he name himself? The Vindicated? Or Eddie the... And he just basically the banished. Or yeah, whatever. Eddie the banished. Yeah, and he changes because he wants to be. He wants to change. He, well, wants, he doesn't want to run anymore. Yeah. He wants to stand and fight. And, uh, yeah. and so, man, like they get. You know, he actually plays that right because he's actually trained in guitar. Oh, so he dope. played that. That's he played dope. that riff. He just played like I. I'm not really good at. I don't really know no instruments, but there's always kind of a cheat code into playing similar songs in an easier way. So he basically just found the cheat code to play it in an easier way. So he's actually playing it throughout there, and there's like this really cool scene that later on of him actually getting to play with Metallica, uh, in like well, Lars's like house or something. That's fucking dope. Yeah. But so ultimately, like the whole squad went yeah. to the upside down to try and save the day, and it wound up being up to eleven, and eleven effectively managed to save the day, but only um, through love, only through love of Mike, right? Yeah. Mike is a Mike. Yeah, uh, the yeah Wheeler. Yeah, Wheeler. Yeah, yeah. only and, through the, the and and there's a there's essentially a painting that Will has where Mike is the heart, Eleven is of course the mind, and the other and and each crew basically brings something. Max is essentially like um, strength through like resilience, and um, you know each character. But the brings, big the big thing was that Mike yeah, was the heart. Yeah, Mark was the heart, and, and so, he's the essentially the one who's able to to bring out this like love and compassion to to Eleven to know that she's able to fight Vecna even if she doesn't feel capable like everything that stunts her can be kind of like quelled through the through the love and compassion that Mike has for her and so uh, what did the defeat of Vecna actually look like I don't remember um, he basically gets put up against the wall and he gets kind of pushed into the into like he gets pushed into that like kind of like red vines and essentially um, he gets pushed into those red vines, right? Because he's not actually there. This is just a this is just a mind fight with him and with him and eleven. Right? That's right. So so he essentially gets pushed into the vines and you see him kind of getting well, smushed that's into right. he's not really yeah, gone. Yeah. He just got kind of temporarily banished. So, so like he gets pushed into the vines and then you come back and you see Uma Thurman's daughter you see Willer. I mean, you see you see um, Harrington. Harrington, and of course uh, Nancy. Nancy throwing Motov cocktails at him, and her shooting him with a twelve gauge shotgun, and him essentially flying out of the window. And it's that very Mike Myers Friday the Thirteenth. You go to inspect the body, and the it's body's gone. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I remember. And so again, the the squad who went into the upside down went and actually fought him in the upside mm-hmm. down while he was occupied yeah. fighting Eleven. And yeah. as Eleven was pushing him into the wall, they hit him with the. Molotov he's essentially getting him. weakened because he's like his 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 mind is occupied. Well, yeah, I mean, he's literally like imagine you're sitting yeah. there meditating and you mm-hmm. can't hear him see what's going on, and all of a sudden people are throwing Molotovs yeah, at you. Yeah, exactly. So and so, uh, one of the things that I like the most is that uh, how 
the arc between uh, Max and Sinclair, how mm-hmm. like they were able to rekindle their love, yeah. and how um, Sinclair fought the main jock while the main jock had a gun mm-hmm. and managed to win. And then when uh, when Vecna killed Max and the fucking ripped yeah, open, ripped opens it just he like just got turned, turned into <laughs> pus. He just got turned <laughs> into you, nothing. You seen that meme where it's like Tobey Maguire happy and then Tobey Maguire sad? So it's like seeing Vecna open up the 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 the, uh, the upside down and it's him crying and it's like seeing the scene whatever his name him is gets split yeah, him gets and split he's, like still and crying, he's still but crying he's but he's like what? yeah that's that's excellent <laughs> so great so great and uh, basically man like everybody has to move out of Hawkins right like the city's decimated yeah the, yeah and and you get kind of uh, so like there's there's the CW part of it that you kind of don't want to touch on but like Uma Thurman's daughter what the fuck does CW mean uh, soap opera okay teen angsty. Gotcha. There's, uh, there's like the there's like the soap opera part of it where, um, where everybody's kind of like sad boying it because you know everybody's been through a hell of a yeah well and thing. yeah and there's also they got to play love into it so like the one who's hanging out with Stoner Boy doesn't say that he got into the same college and he's kind of pulling away from Nancy and Nancy is kind of rekindling a spark that she had with Harrington, Harrington and Harrington is pining over three different women at any given time because he just and he also wants to be a father and he wants to take care of children and he's got and he really does love the the people that he sur- he surrounded himself with mm-hmm. and so there's this and you find out that um as they kind of like coalesce into the gym at Hawkins to kind of like convene and meet um Eddie is kind of given a, a nice ending for his uncle who knew that he wasn't a bad person. Yeah, so this is actually like one of my favorite parts of the yeah, whole movie yeah. um, was whenever uh, Dustin Henderson yeah, Dustin, yeah. Um, saw Eddie's uncle like putting the flyers up, you know. Even though they're getting defaced every time. Yeah, and he's like, man, I'm not going to stop. Like, I know my boy was good yeah. and, and I know that he's still out there and that's when Dustin's like, hey, man. He's, he gives him the pick on yeah, the guitar. Yeah. The, the guitar pick uh, necklace that he had. Yeah. He, he like, sacrificed and, himself and like, and for man, a town like, that hated him. He's like, look, man, like, he's gone. But, like, know that, like, he stood and fought to protect a city that, like, had outcasts him mm-hmm. and that it turned against him and he still was good enough to stand and fight for that mm-hmm. city and he's the reason why we're all here right now yeah uh there was also a couple of things we missed like the like ton of shit we missed. yeah like them gearing up and going to the gun shop and that was super tense yeah the gun shop scene yeah. was crazy and then uh i love how they stole the rv yeah. to get to the gun shop yeah that um, was uh and then there's there was a, a lot of quirky stuff that happened. so good like um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that happened. The in flashlight California. communication was really awesome. Yeah, yeah, how they were able yeah. to, yeah, how they were, and uh, it was neat how they discovered that it was like in the past, the upside down oh, in the yeah, past, like, because Nancy went yeah. and looked at her diary and was yeah, able like, to see the last entry. It's like four years in the past. It was right whenever like, the portal opened up. It was and right, whenever, right whenever Mike went missing. There's also a, or not Mike, uh, you know, Dustin's girlfriend Will. becomes critical in it. Dustin's girlfriend oh, yeah, is yeah. able. She, yeah, I mean, she, yeah, she she's saved able. The day again. Yeah. She, she was able to hack and uh, and figure out yeah. the GPS coordinates of where. Uh, Little war games kind of like mash up with an old school old school movie about like you know hacking and and getting into like. It was good, man. Yeah. It was so good. I enjoyed everything. So did you did you hear the did you hear the the theory of like every every part inside her house is actually a scene that plays out in the actual entire season. So like the girl dying on the floor and being cried over by the brother is Max dying in the in this attic, oh, no. and then like I think someone's uh, like there's like a pot that gets caught on fire as like lights get turned off. There's like something that's that catches so fire. So each individual, in, each individual like mayhem that's happening throughout this like house are representative, are representative of, of things that have happened throughout the season. That's really cool. It's I, really really is I, cool. I, I miss that, and I wish that I hadn't. Yeah, yeah. So, so good on you for pointing yeah, that out. That, that that was really interesting. Well, thank y'all guys. Uh, thank you for like getting me to talk about it because it's like pulling it from like not really. I should have ca- caught up on an episode. And like, kind of like, been a little bit more like I'm terrible with names to begin with. So movie names are well, even worse. I got the names here. Yeah. So like, movie names to me, like, are crucial. But it's I still have trouble. Like, I have movies that I love, and the like those names will stick with me forever. You know. So it was like, I get it. Yeah. But like, once you get into it, and once you watch it, you know who each individual character is. Yeah. It's just like I'm just terrible with names. 
So I think that the next we watch is going to have to be like a, either a campy 80s movie or something that we essentially go back to, which each period of our life I'm gonna tell changes. I'm going right now, the next we watch that I want to do needs to be Drive with Brian Gosling. You're not a what does he say? You're not a not what does he say? You're not a Comanche. What is what on on a on? You can't remember the name of the movie. Much no, 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 no. It's it's something from Rick and Morty. Whatever. Oh, you're not a scorpion <laughs> in a Navajo folktale. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. he has the scorpion on the back. Yeah, of I can't his change jet. my nature. <laughs> it's like yes, you can. That's literally what defines us as a species. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, bro, drive is so good, but we're, we're, a place we're, beyond the pines is amazing. I've seen that. Oh yeah, you well, gotta maybe, watch. Maybe it. that's one that I can watch and we yeah. can we can immediately. So, so yeah, let, let's, it's a place beyond the pines. So let, let, let's do let's do drive on yeah. the ones who woke up, mm-hmm. and then we'll do a place beyond the pines on yeah. SUL. Yeah, because it's a place beyond the pines. It's the the uh, drive, and then there's a third movie where he meets God. Who? Ryan Gosling. Me? And it's it's the same directors or it's the same it's similar. I haven't motifs. seen either. I haven't seen either of those other movies. Yeah, the place beyond the pines is really good. All right, well, well if it's got Ryan Gosling. I'm gonna be here for it. Thank you so. Oh, thank y'all so much for watching, man. I can't wait. I'm excited for uh, the next SUIL we watch, man. I mean, oh, we're, we're and like, I'm gonna state it here. I'm stating here today, right now, that we're gonna do an SUIL we tried, so that it actually happens. And we're going to get the hottest wings we can get. And we're going to make ourselves cry on camera. I mean, it's been spoken to the universe. This is this is recording right yep. now. Everyone's going to hear it. So we got to live up to the expectations we create now. All right. So next time, meet us on SUIL We Tried. And we'll also meet us on the next SUIL We Watched, which is going to be Drive. Drive. Well, the, the, SUIL, oh, the SUIL We Watched is place going to be yeah, Place Beyond play, the Pines. Yeah, Place Beyond the Pines. Either way, guys. Thank y'all again. Monkey Mouse Studios. We're pumping out all types of fucking content. Check it out. Appreciate y'all. It's over. Yeah. Monkey Mouse. Monkey Mouse. Monkey Mouse. Monkey Mouse.